بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته So today inshallah ta'ala we are going through the name of Allah Al-Jabbar uh, This name Al-Jabbar implies a few things Number one it means the enforcer uh, the compeller uh, the one who is dominant and powerful and great A second implication is referring to Allah's highness the exalted uh, is another meaning and yet a third one is actually from the verb jabara itself, meaning to what? To mend or to fix. So it means like the fixer, the mender, the one who repairs. Repairs what? Repairs relationships, broken bones, or even uh, repairs, let's say, a broken heart, subhanAllah. All of this is implied in what? Al-Jabbar. So Allah Ta'ala, and, and you might ask yourself, what is the connection between these two things? How is it that these two things are correlated? Well, uh, first and foremost, the idea is that since Allah Ta'ala is the one who is all-powerful and the enforcer, He is one who will never be broken. He is the one who can uh, 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 mend, but all, he, will, he never needs to, let's say, for example, uh, fix or mend himself because nobody can overpower him. But another implication that I find quite beautiful is that all tyrants on planet Earth, uh, whether we're talking about the people of Fir'aun, of Ad, Thamud, Qawm Lut, whatever, whoever it may be, we know that ultimately Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala destroys them. And, but that's not it, it doesn't just stop there. It's not that Allah Ta'ala just gets rid of the problem and destroys uh, 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 the, the tyrants. But in addition to that, Allah Ta'ala then what? Uh, sends new guidance, uh, guides the people, sends rains and, and allows the crops to grow. Basically, you find both ideas being implemented at once. So one concept of Al-Jabbar is the one who is powerful, the enforcer, the compeller, the one who can uh, dominate and destroy the enemies, right? But at the same time, is it just that he destroys the enemies? No. After the damage has been done and after they have uh, been, after these tyrants have been removed, then what do you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does? You find that Allah ta'ala mends the planet. Allah ta'ala brings people back to the guidance and back to truth. And so Al-Jabbar, uh, you could say, is a reference to both. The root letters, uh, uh, Jim, Ba, and Ra, these three letters uh, occur, or uh, words that are associated to, the, to it, to these three root letters, the trilateral root, occur ten times in the Quran, referring always to Jabbar, the name Jabbar, or the word, I should say, Jabbar. Only one time is it refer referencing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, of the ten times, nine of them are actually referring to it in the negative, like such and such a person is not Jabbar, such a person wasn't a tyrant or wasn't a, uh, uh, you know, an enforcer or a harsh person. Uh, but when it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously Allah ta'ala has full power, but this doesn't corrupt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ta'ala does not use this for injustice. The one time it's used for the name of Allah is uh, in the famous ayah in which many of the Asma'ullah are mentioned. Allah says, بَعْدَ عَرُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّسُ السَّلَامُ الْمُؤْمِنُ الْمُهَيْمِنُ الْعَزِيز الْجَبَّارِ Allah Ta'ala says what? He is Allah, uh, other than whom there is no deity, the sovereign, the pure, the, uh, the perfection, uh, the bestower of faith, the overseer, the exalted in might, and the compeller. So this is the implication here that Allah Ta'ala is the one, he's the enforcer, the compeller, the dominant. Now, it's interesting that you find that both Yahya alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam are both described as not being Jabbar. Uh, and as Allah Ta'ala says, what? وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَيْهِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ جَبَّارًا عَصِيَّ Allah says uh, about Yahya alayhi uh, salam, he was dutiful to his parents and he was not a disobedient tyrant. Furthermore, Allah Ta'ala says in the same surah, Surah Maryam, uh, Allah says about Isa alayhi salam, وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي uh, in the first person he's saying what and uh, Allah Ta'ala made me dutiful to my, to my mother and he has not made me a wretched tyrant now the question is of all the MBA, why is it that these two were particularly singled out as not being uh, tyrannical or uh, compellers or harsh or rough with their parents I'll leave that as a question for you to think about for two seconds Time's up. So what's the answer? Let's think about this. Uh, uh, Yahya alayhi salam uh, was a child that was born to very elderly parents. And uh, Isa alayhi salam was born miraculously of a very young single mom, essentially. And so when you look at it from that perspective, you realize that subhanAllah, in these type of circumstances, you can find that the kids, especially as they grow up and eventually become, let's say, adolescents or even adults, if they want to, they can be very rebellious and they could take advantage 
of uh, uh, their, pers- their, 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 their strength and they're, uh, they could be more persuasive in the household and sort of bully their parents. I mean, if, if a kid is born to very elderly parents, then he could sort of run the household, even though he's not uh, wise enough to do so, even though he shouldn't, he should, he should be obedient. He could just say, you know what, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'll do whatever I want. And same thing with when a, a single mom who is very young and inexperienced, like Maria uh, uh, Maria, she was very young and she was a single mom. And you can imagine how a son, once that son grows a little bit older, can take advantage and really uh, rule the household tyrannically. So subhanAllah, you find in both instances, Allah Ta'ala is saying, and this is a powerful lesson for all of us to realize, uh, uh, you know, that people that are in these circumstances, whether it be a kid that's being raised by his grandparents or whether it be uh, a woman that's been divorced, you know, the kids have to be very cautious uh, not to take advantage of these, uh, they're basically the, these, these caretakers. And uh, we have to you know, do our best to influence them and tell them, hey, look, your mother or your grandparents are in a situation where, yeah, maybe you can take advantage of them, but you, you have to remember the example of Yahya, you have to remember the example of Isa, so subhanAllah, very, very beautiful uh, lessons that we can take from this. And furthermore, um, when kids rule the adults, that is a very clear indication of social decline. And this is unfortunately what we find in the uh, famous uh, hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, and it says that uh, the woman will give birth to her master, right? Famous uh, hadith Jibreel. Now, of course, there's lots of interpretation. There's lots of commentary as to what, do, what does that mean? One interpretation that's very popular, very common, is that this is a reference to the end times and how near the end times the kids will be ruling over the uh, parents. And this is a very unfortunate uh, reality. Sometimes you see, you know, kids having a meltdown in uh, some sort of toy toy store uh, or whatever the case is. Uh, uh, you know, you find that the kids are basically bullying the parents and getting everything they want, basically spoiled brats. And this is something that in Islam we know that we need to teach our parents, the parents, to yes, be merciful and kind to kids, but at the same time teach the kids to be respectful of their elders. Now, Allah Ta'ala tells the Prophet ﷺ, uh, uh, that he is not a compeller. He is not someone that can control, right? At the end of uh, Surah Qaf, Allah Ta'ala says what? نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ It's a beautiful ayah. Allah Ta'ala is letting the Prophet ﷺ know, listen, I know a lot of disbelievers, they're attacking you, they're trying to argue with you, they're trying to bring doubts to your message, but I am fully aware of all of their arguments, I'm fully aware of all of their attacks, of all the slanders that they're saying. نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Allah says, we are, mo- are, are most knowing of what they say. So what can you do? Can you force them to believe? Can you uh, force them to accept your message and your responses? No. And so Allah says, what? وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِجَبَّارِ And you are not over them a tyrant. You are not someone that is over them an enforcer, a compeller. You can't force people to believe. Even if, it, even if it's for their own good, you can't do that. So what can you do? فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٍ Beautiful, beautiful ayah. Allah Ta'ala says, what? So therefore, what? If they come with all sorts of doubts and all sorts of arguments, and you are trying to guide them to the truth, but you can't force them, then the only thing you could do is remind them with the Qur'an, anybody who fears my uh, threat. In other words, Allah Ta'ala is saying what? When it comes to all their arguments, the Qur'an can suffice. When it comes to all of their uh, 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 doubts and shubuhat, let the Qur'an speak on your behalf. SubhanAllah, you'll find the answers in the Qur'an. Amazing. This, this, this ayah is such a, such a reassurance to the believers, especially those who are involved in, in da'wah, that the Qur'an has got your back that the, Allah Ta'ala knows all the possible doubts and Allah Ta'ala ha, has you covered. And then furthermore, you can't force people, but SubhanAllah, you have something so powerful, Allah Ta'ala's word. And this is going to resonate with anybody who has any semblance of khashya, of, of khawf, uh, of, of fear, of, of, of awe, of reverence for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So beautiful, beautiful ayat. Now the question is, how do we implement this name of Allah, Al-Jabbar. How do we bring this into our lives? As we know, man ahsaha dakhala jannah is the hadith we started at the beginning. We said that the Prophet says that you don't just have to uh, learn and memorize them, but you have to live by these names of Allah. So how can we keep this name of Allah, Al-Jabbar, uh, present in our lives? Well, one is that you can remember that since Allah is Al-Jabbar, He is the one who mends, so therefore I should always turn to Him, turn to Allah Subh'ala when I'm in a weak and broken position, I should always turn back to Allah Ta'ala and ask Allah Ta'ala to uh, 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 mend me or repair me or fix my situation. As the Prophet says, uh, ما من عبد تصيبه مصيبة فيقول, There isn't a servant that suffers any calamity except that he, when he says, إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون اللهم أجرني في مصيبتي وأخلف لي خيرا منها That, uh, that O oh Allah, reward me for my affliction and give me something better than, in, than, uh, better than it in exchange for it. So in other words, you're making dua, O oh Allah, I went through this hardship. O oh Allah, I ask you to replace whatever I lost with something 
something even better, something from you. When you show this patience, when you turn back to Allah Ta'ala in times of hardship, and when you beg of him, SubhanAllah, what's gonna happen? Uh, Allah will, will uh, give him re reward for his affliction and would give him something better than it in exchange. Uh, this is what's going to happen. Furthermore, it's a very beautiful uh, narration from uh, uh, Auf ibn Malik. He says what? He said that he prayed Qiyam al he was praying at night with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, one night and then the Prophet went down into Ruku'ah and he was making Ruku'ah for an extremely long period of time. It felt like as long as the Prophet was standing and reciting Baqarah. You can imagine, there's a very long period of time he's staying in Ruku'ah for such a long period and he keeps repeating what? Subhana dhil jabarut wal malakut wal kibriya wal azama. Over and over and over again, he keeps on saying what? Glory be to the one who has all power, all sovereignty, magnificence, and all might. SubhanAllah, what a incredible glorification to just say over and over and over again while you're in Rukur in the late night. Nobody's, uh, uh, you know, observing, watching. Nobody's, uh, you know, it's just something you could do by yourself. You pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make this dua over, or this, you should say this, 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 this praise to, of Allah ta'ala over and over again, subhanAllah. Furthermore, how can we implement this name of Allah? Obviously, we can't become Jabbar ourselves. Allah ta'ala said you should not become a, a, someone who is trying to overpower or enforce people. We don't do that as Muslims. But when it comes to reconciling and mending people, what can we do? Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Allah says, the believers are nothing but a brotherhood. A brotherhood and implied also a sisterhood. That we are one family. And therefore what? فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ So reconcile between your brothers. This is what Allah Ta'ala commands us. فَأَصْلِحُوا So therefore you must reconcile between your brothers. So when you see two people in a fight, when you know that so-and-so is not going to go to that a get together, it's not going to go to that dinner, they can't go to that wedding, and there's a fight between these family members, these, these friends, whatever the case is, and you sit back and you grab your popcorn and you just enjoy the show, this is terrible behavior. This is not how a Muslim brother or sister should act. This should not be entertaining or fun for you, nor should you be like, well, not my business, we are each other's business. This is what Allah Ta'ala is teaching us, that we are a brethren, brotherhood, sisterhood. We have to stick up for one another, and so we are each other's business. We have to uh, reconcile, inshallah Ta'ala. And subhanAllah, it's really amazing that Allah Ta'ala is the one who can mend the hearts, even in the most extreme circumstances, as Allah Ta'ala mentions about the mother of Musa A.S. Uh, Allah says, and the heart of Musa's mother became empty. So she's watching this, she puts the baby in the basket into the river you can imagine trusting trusting a baby to a basket in a river subhanallah the child's going to drown right the, the first thing you're thinking is as that child is sailing away if it flips that's it it's going to capsize and the child is going to drown and you and so the, the the she had no other choice obviously they were going to come and uh, they were slaughtering the newborns right so she was about Allah says she was about to disclose so her heart becomes completely empty she becomes basically you could say hopeless or different ways of understanding it but still you could say hit rock rock bottom just complete depression she was about to disclose the matter concerning what we uh, uh, concerning him uh, had we not bound fast her heart had we not tied her heart that she would be of the believer so Allah Ta'ala is saying that we were the ones Allah Ta'ala is the one who kept her heart in such a state where she wasn't going to disclose what was happening. Uh, so Allah Ta'ala is the one that can mend the hearts. And uh, another very important point is that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu commands us to express our love for one another. Yes, indeed, the Prophet says what? إِذَا أَحَبَّ الرَّجُلُ أَخَاهُ فَلْيُخْبِرْهُ أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّهُ That when a man loves his brother, he should tell him that he loves him. This is in Sunan Abi Dawood, it's an authentic hadith as well. So what is this saying? That unfortunately you see that some people, they're very difficult to show affection. Some people, you know, it's like pulling teeth trying to get them to say something sweet or kind. And you know, uh, maybe I, <laughs> I could be that way myself, unfortunately. But you know, we have to work on ourselves. Sometimes we have to push ourselves to express that love and that kindness to your, uh, fa of course, family members, but even your friends. You have to let them know, uh, you know, I love you for the sake of Allah. And then you could, the person can respond, uh, which means, uh, may the one, um, may Allah love you, the one who you love me for his sake. It's very long and convoluted in English, but it sounds nicer in Arabic. Anyway, um, subhanAllah. And we should always remember that between the two sajdas, there's a very beautiful dua you can make, which includes this, this verb of uh, uh, jabara, which, which translates to, Allahumma ghfirli warhamni wahadini wajburni wa'afini warzuqni warfa'ni. That this is a dua the Prophet would make in between the two sajdas. He would say, Oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy on me, guide me, and then uh, mend or fix me. 
or reform, you could say. Fix me, mend me, reform me, and then protect me, provide for me, and elevate me. So it's a very, very beautiful dua that we should get into the habit of saying in between the two sajdas, may Allah Ta'ala make us of those who are always calling upon Allah Ta'ala to mend us. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who mend others as well. May Allah Ta'ala make us recognize, may Allah Ta'ala make us of those who recognize that He has full control and full power over every tyrant and Allah Ta'ala can get rid of them. This life is just a temporary test and ultimately Allah Ta'ala can remove their tyranny and mend the land and fix everything. And if Allah Ta'ala can do that on a global scale, then of course Allah Ta'ala can fix whatever problems we're having in our lives. So may Allah make, make us of those who are constantly turning back to Al-Jabbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa